Hello, Istanbul. Are you all present? Yeah? Or are you thinking about other things? Your wife, your girlfriend, your mother-in-law, your work, your boss. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. And the story starts inside a curious mind. Um, about four years ago, I was asked to do a lecture at the University of uh, Rotterdam. And as a small experiment, I decided to analyze my thinking, uh, to analyze how I create, because I'm a creative entrepreneur, so I'm both a creative and an entrepreneur. And um, so I started taking a look in, inside, basically, my head. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what happened then, what I've learned, and what it led up to. And every time I ask you a question, so hopefully when you're, you're all set, you're all present, that you can also think about this question for yourself. So one of the questions I ask myself is, what is my passion and purpose? And that's a pretty hard question. What is your passion and purpose in life? And I answered it uh, by, by saying, I want to work with creative people, and I work on, want to work on creative projects. And a project can be anything. It can be a new business, a new event, a new game. It could be a new political party. For me, a project could be anything. Uh, and so I went on doing my things. And one of the things is my mentor here, Eckhart Vince, I work with him establishing a green challenge, which is uh, quite a large uh, prize. And at the first time we launched the prize, we had somebody else there. So it was part of my mission. I wanted to bring together brilliant creative minds and do creative projects. So when you are creating something, um, you first need to look. You need to think. You need to look at the world. So when I was around uh, 25, Actually, I wanted to be a rock musician. I'm a failed rock musician. So at a certain moment, we had internet at the university. And I was like, this is going to be it. This is going to change the world. I need to wake up. I need to do stuff. So I started becoming an internet entrepreneur, very much based on, on this publication. I saw something. Others also saw it. We jumped on the bandwagon, and we did our thing. But 10 years after the launch of the article, or 10 years after the launch of the internet, the commercial internet, Wired did an article about the, how the internet had changed the world. I also took that article. I started analyzing. I started comparing the two articles. So what do you see and what do you think, and how you, do you use those thoughts to reflect on yourself and on your next big plan? And there is a recent um, a study by Harvard, and this was an article in Harvard Business Review by Greater Christensen, that the innovators of our world, as they have analyzed, and some of them are here, combine associating, combine asking questions about themselves, about the world around them. They combine observation, experiments, and networking, like we do here. That's why it actually was said in the article, that's why people go to events like TED or TEDx. So for me, innovation is not about looking at the future, seeing something, and you know, stepping into it. It's a continuous process of sensing, a continuous process of sensing, where not only ideas collide in your head, but also people. Projects, everything. It's one big creative mashup. So what do you see? That was one of the things that I analyzed when I was doing this, this first talk. Then the second part was very much about what do you, what do you feel? What do you feel? Um, when I was eight, I was on a critical crossroad. My parents got divorced. My mother was very ill and my parents got bankrupt. That clearly changed my life. And unfortunately, the four following years, the amount of stress on my young body was so much that until the day to day, I can feel that. But it took me until this talk to realize that. So when I was doing this talk at the Rotterdam University, 
analyzing myself and my brain, I also look at my biggest fears, the fear of losing everything at any moment in your life. So that's part of what you can feel and how fear can limit you as a, as a creative or as an innovator and, and a leader. So take a look at your fears and not let yourself be compromised by them. Then on another uh, level, uh, a little bit more light hopefully, um, I watched a documentary by a famous Dutch painter called um, Karel Appel. And he was painting massive paintings, massive paintings. And I think he was around 70 or older. And they asked him, why do you paint so many big painting, paintings? Why do you paint so many big paintings? And he said, for me, painting is like flying for a bird. And I heard that sentence, and it was so powerful to me. For me, painting is like flying to a, for a bird. So when you are analyzing yourself, it's picking up these signals. But it's also when you go out to do your next big project, is do things that come natural to you. Chichi Mahalitz wrote a great book about this around flow. So do the things you're really good at and try to pick a challenge that's a little bit bigger so you can improve your skill. Instead of a society and a corporate world where everybody is looking at what you're doing wrong. So build on your strength. Then when you see, when you feel, uh, it comes to the point that you need to create. And I come from a creative industries background, so I come from advertising, digital, gaming, etc. Uh, but at a certain moment in my life, I thought, there is more. So what if I could use those creative skills to develop, think about how the city can be planned? Or even at a certain moment, I was part of a Dutch innovation platform, chaired by our prime minister, to think how we could create new land, like a tulip. I, as you probably know, the Dutch have always fought against the water, and we're pretty good at creating new la land. So how does that work in your brain when you come up with these ideas? Is it underneath the shower? We often talk about um, the, the long nose of innovation. Um, so sometimes an idea just simply ne needs time, you know, like a, the good sauce in a dish needs to thicken. So how do you envision your future? We were in this platform with some of the amazing pe most amazing people of the country. And for me, it was really an insight because a lot of them didn't really have the time to think about the future. So not many of them took the time to reflect, to see, to see how their world is, is changing. Um, and that's, I think, also the problem with our current society, that so many people are stuck in business as usual. So many people are stuck in their daily rhythm of life. So that's the per first part of my story. Are you still present? Okay, good, great. The second part is that three months later, I get a call from the city of Amsterdam, the vice mayor. And they asked me, do you want to help us set up a top level international school for creative leadership and entrepreneurship? How about that? This was four years ago. So I was analyzing my brain. Suddenly, a vice mayor calls up, asked me to do something I was just sort of as a, as a I would say, amateur analyzing for a lecture. And it started a new part of this journey. So we brought together uh, a group of some of the most amazing creatives of the country, people like the architect Ben van Berkel, Marcel Wanders, and we together with Menno van Dijk from McKinsey, we co-founded a thing called Think. Think, T-H-N-K, the School of Creative Leadership. And we basically started with, because I had just done this, this, this talk, with what would be a school I would want to go to. So when you start your next venture, it's always good to say, ask yourself, what would be a business I would want to be a customer of? So we founded uh, Think together with this group. It's been a great ride. And around that time, IBM released the, the following research uh, report. Now, when I, let me go back to this. When I started my career, I worked at a corporate, big corporation, a big brewer, and I was asked to be involved with the internet because, as you know, I jumped on the internet bandwagon. 
So we were asked also to set up a trend watching unit. And before we went uh, um, uh, um, uh, working on that, they assessed us on what kind of profile we had. And I was considered a plant. So you know, I don't know whether you know the Belbin uh, profiles, a plant. A plant is something you give water. It's not really like an individual. But then, 15 years later, suddenly people are asking for plants. So 1,500 CEOs from all over the world that survived the 2008 and 2009 um, economical crisis were asked, what is the biggest challenges? It's the complexity of the world. It's the grand challenges of our society. And what's the biggest capability that's needed in our society? It's creative leadership. So right when we were setting up this new school, right when we started that, we saw this report which basically um, gave, uh, gave us a little bit of support in a more classical world. So what is it? We're setting up, it's, it's people, for people with a mid-career at this moment, uh, and I'm going to make some comparisons. First of all, it's focused on grand societal challenges. So we're not looking for the next uh, smartphone. It's really, we see a lot of challenges coming up to our world. I, will not, I, I can show you all these pictures around sustainability, education, etc. Uh, but we feel it's really the intersection of societal problems, sustainable problems, and economic problems, where there is a, a need for creativity and creative leadership. The world is in desperate need of creative solutions. There are so many um, traditionally schooled leaders and individuals that base their decisions on the same strategic reports from the same consultancy firms. And the world, is, as we just saw, has become very much uh, complex. So we need people that are wired to think different. And we need creative solutions for the big challenges that we have had. And how we work in, in our school is that we work together with people from NGOs, from corporates, and we do open innovation uh, uh, projects with our participants. We recently did one around the future of education. We did one around smart energy together with the Carbon War Room, which is the global think tank founded by Sir Richard Branson. And we're going to do one around early learning, age group zero to eight. We already saw today uh, this age group, they're taking the smartphone. Some of them are biking. Some of them are biking. So we're going to do one around early learning, work with the participants, work with global uh, experts on this topic. And actually, uh, I asked my nine-year-old daughter to be one of the project leaders on this, uh, because I think she is at the right age to, to do that. And she wants to do it. She was a little bit critical, but uh, she wants to do it. The third element is that um, leadership is, is an individual act. If you look at an S-curve of growth, um, we all know at a certain moment is an end of growth. But we have also seen some uh, evidence that when you reach the end of growth, society, business, gives you less room for experimentation, less room for innovation. Let's go back to business as usual. Let's do not do crazy things. And at a certain moment, there is always one leader that jumps out and starts the ne next growth curve. So it is very much a leadership uh, act, an individual leadership act, but also very much in a team, more team-based approach. And then the third element is that uh, leadership is, is uh, uh, development is very experimental. So uh, let me give you uh, a couple more examples. We work with around 60 tools, and I would, li I would like to share one tool you with you in two minutes. Are you still present? Okay. Um, it's a reframing tool. I, I can email it to you. You can do it online and um, take a paradigm, like current production paradigm. Current production by time uses exhaust natural resources. It produces waste. It mixes materials, heavy materials, light materials, and recycling basically becomes downcycling. At the end of a life cycle of, uh, of a car, it ends on somewhere in a landfill or it ends, you know, it, it gets burned. So this is one current belief, and we have all our own beliefs. So this exercise helps you to challenge those beliefs. And the beliefs around that are the supporting beliefs for your core belief. So with this exercise, the next step you do is that for each supporting belief, you think something literally opposite. 
So what if uh, you can reuse natural materials? What if uh, waste becomes food? And you can have all kinds of associations around each supporting material. What if you can separate all the materials? And what if you don't downcycle, but you upcycle, right? And this is typically an exercise where you don't need to think logical, but you do just say also very uh, opposite things and almost ridiculous things. And, and then you take those new opposite beliefs and then you come up with something new, which could, as this example could, for instance, be created the creative paradigm. So we do these kind of exercises to train the creative muscle. When people come to, to, to think, we select them and we've scouted those people from all over the world based on their curiosity and based on their passion and purpose. And we help them envision a better future, work on their visioning on what they could do in the coming five to 10 years. We help them on orchestrating creative teams. We help them on their personal development and their presence, total presence of both body and mind. And we help them in realizing breakthrough results in our accelerator program. Now, I have a confession, I'm a dyslectic, and my whole family is dyslectic, and that's one of the reasons probably why I think different. Uh, but I'm gonna do something which I normally don't do on stage. I'm gonna read out the experience of one of the first participants when we launched the program last year. We began the week by walking on water to the island of Ameland across the muddy low tide. We waded waist deep in wetsuits following a Gandalf-style quartet of white-bearded frogmen leading us metaphorically and physically on a new journey. And if all felt slightly Lord of the Ringish, it was. As the week unfolded from our island booth camp through the seven times 14 hours days at Amsterdam's new School of Creative Leadership, I, one thing became clear. Think was going to be epic. Would we survive? So we don't have, we have a working space, but we don't have a classroom. And when people start, we first cross the sea, when the tides are low, by the way. And um, we currently have 100 people from 25 countries in the program. A lot of them are starting new things or trying to start new things in their own country. And uh, it's been an amazing experience. And this is a story I wanted to share. Because this whole story started when I started looking inside myself and inside my brain. And what I've learned is that self-reflection and self-understanding, both on a logical as well as on an emotional side, can be such a powerful thing. I've learned that we need to fly like a bird, do the things that come natural. And I learned that if you work on something that's bigger than yourself, uh, it almost becomes a creation engine in itself. And for me, the real value of that is that the last four years have given me uh, really a lot of meaningfulness and, and happiness in the process. And this story will continue, hopefully. Thank you. Lars, thank you. Uh, you still think is a new baby almost, it's very new, right? So you haven't accumulated a lot of experience it's over the, it's fairly new, you know, you, there are, are there any patterns that are coming up? It's a very good question because uh, one of the things is as an institute, we have committed ourselves not only to help the next generation of leaders, but also to have societal impact. And we do this with these projects I mentioned and with the accelerator projects from the participants. And uh, yesterday I was with the uh, Minister of Economic, uh, sorry, of Education. And as a result of one of the projects, we're gonna set up a new school for teachers. Okay. So t because if you want to fix the educational system in a country, you should start with the teachers. So that's already a project, new project coming out. So they're coming alive. Yeah. Actually, the idea of finding solution within yourselves is not new. It just has to come back up again to the surface in a way, I think. Anyway, thank you Thanks very much. Thanks.